One day in the early 1800s, a wave brought a giant baby along the shore in Cape Cod, New England. The villagers were instructed by loud cries. They could not believe their eyes. Ah! Oh my! I cannot believe my eyes. It's a big baby. Villagers put him in a wheelbarrow and pushed him to the meeting house. What shall we name him? Alfred Bulltop Stormalong. Stormy for short. Almost blew the roof off. Brilliant. What the little boy said is amazing. As Stormy grew older, he grew to be the main attraction of Cape Cod. He didn't mind the attention much because he didn't care. It reminded him he was different from everyone else. Stormy's love for the ocean was so great that the villagers used to say he had salt water in his veins. By the time he was 12, he was 36 feet. It's your time to go out in the world. You can't fit in the schoolhouse. You must be sent to Boston immediately. It's for the best. A sailor life is the only one for me. The sea is my best friend, and I belong with her. Stormy strode toward the Boston Harbor where he met a captain. Blow me down! I'm not a man. I am 12 years old. I guess you'll be my captain, boy. The sailors were a bit shocked to see a 36 feet new cabin boy, and eventually the Lady of the Seas finally accepted Stormy's mammoth size. Hoist the anchors! Let me take care of it. Stormy died, stuck a knife between his teeth. Stormy disappeared, and terrible, and terrible sounds came from the water. The ship began tossing on wild waves. It seemed that all aboard were to be hauled to a wet grave. Whoosh! All of a sudden, Stormy came up from the sea with an anchor in his hand. What, what happened? happened? I fought a deadly two-ton octopus. What did you name him? I wrestled that eight-tentacled octopus into double knots. Since then, he was the most popular sailor on board. After some time, Stormy felt lonely again. His big side restricted him from doing many things, like watching the sea from the side of the boat. Row, 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 row gently down, down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. See, why did you betray me? I'm going to put an oar over my, over my shoulder and head west. I know, I'm far enough away from the sea, and I won't ever think about her again. Pioneers often invited Stormy to share their dinner and asked him questions about the sea. It wasn't until Stormy came up to the plains of Kansas that a farmer questioned him about his oar. Hey, what's the funny thing you've got on your shoulder? Good question, mate. I, I am going to settle down on this spot and dig me some potatoes. Soon he became the best farmer around. He planted over five million potatoes. He watered the five million potatoes with the sweat of his brow. But all the time, Stormy was watering, hoeing, picking, and planting. He knew he still hadn't found a home. He was too big to go to square dancing in the dance hall. He's too big to visit the other farmhouses. He was too big for a general store. He was too big for everything. Soon Stormy started feeling depressed about his size and his self. So confidence starting to fade away, and he felt a yearning for the sea. He missed the fishy smelling breeze and the salt spray. One day, several years after Stormy's disappearance, the sailors of Boston Harbor saw a giant coming down the wharf. As he approached, they began to whoop with joy. Stormy was back in his hometown. But as happy as they were to see him, they were horrified when they discovered how bad he looked. After word spread about Stormy's condition, thousands of sailors gathered to talk about the problem. We got to keep him with us this time. There is only one thing to do. We got to build him a ship big enough for him. The cabin boys agreed with the sailors. We can't have him traveling behind us with his own rowboat. The New England sailors decided to build the biggest clipper ship in the world. Her sails had to be cut and stoned in the Mojave Desert. After she was built, where there was lumber storage all over America, Stormalong named the clipper the Courser. Soon Stormy and the Courser were, were taking cargoes all around the world. After the Civil War, steamships began to transport cargo over the seas. No one quite knew old Stormalong. All they did was recollect him in his funeral, and years afterward they sang about him. Stormy's dead and gone to rest to my way. Hey, Storm along. Of all the sailors, he was the best. Hey, 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 Mr. Storm. Mr. Storm. 
Ever since the seamen first class put ABS after their names, most people think it means able-bodied seamen. But the old New England seafaring men know different. They know it stands for the most amazing deep water sailor who ever lived, Alfred Bulltop Stormalong.